Hey guys, welcome back to Rod Smoking Stuff. So today, we're doing some beef short ribs. I picked these up. Uh, these are a little bigger than most of them I've done, so we're gonna try this out and see how it goes, but I'm pretty excited. Beef short ribs are awesome. They give you that uh, nice beefy flavor. They've got a lot of fat on them, so we gotta get them on there and get them rendered down. Probably gonna take a couple hours. Then we'll put them in a foil pan and uh, make them nice and tender. So anyway, I'll bring you in close and I'll show you how we get these ready to put on the smoker. Okay guys, so you can see these have some nice marbling and stuff in them. Really good looking beef ribs. So, what I'm gonna do though, this top layer of fat is really hard. So I kind of want to get that off there, at least some of it. So I'm just going to take and take a thin layer of that off, because I don't think that's going to, it's not going to render down, it's not going to taste good, it's too hard. So I'm going to get that off there, just like that. This one, you can see this, same thing, so I'm going to not take it all off but i'm gonna take i uh, got a little deep there but that's okay no, that's all right that's about what i wanted so yeah we'll leave a little bit of it up there It'll render down that's soft underneath it i'm just gonna go ahead and this one has kind of some weird silver skin weird stuff here so we're gonna get that off there Some of them you buy in the store, you don't have to trim at all. These came from a local butcher. If I like the way he left them nice and big. They usually in the store they cut them into just little sections, but I kind of like them this big. This one, we're just going to take this strip of fat here off. Just like that. Okay. That's all the trimming we need to do on those. We're just going to get these seasoned up. So, I'm not going to use any kind of a binder. I got some kosher salt. Oh, that's a lot of kosher salt. Let's spread that. <laughs> get a little of that off there, a little over the top. Anyway, we're going to put a light coating of salt. And the reason I'm just going real light on the salt is because I've got that hardcore carnivore that I'm going to put on it and it's got salt in it. Um, I like the hardcore carnivore on beef. It gives it a good flavor. But the other thing that it does is it gives it an awesome looking color and bark that I haven't been able to get with anything else. So I like to use it. Okay. So then get some of our coarse ground black pepper on there which I always put on beef because it's just good and kind of a let me get the big end open here though uh, kind of a Texas style that's what I like I like my beef with pepper on it. it doesn't overpower the meat but it brings the beefiness out which is what we want some of those other rubs and stuff on there and then all you taste is the rub you don't taste the meat okay last but not least we'll hit it with our hardcore carnivore like I say I just really like the color that this gives it when that's the finished product you'll see what it does to it 
I'm going to put a pretty good layer of that on. That's why I go so light on the salt, because this has quite a bit of salt in it. all seasoned up. We're going to let the Weber kettle heat up and then we're going to get these on. All right guys so here we are out at the kettle. We've got it going. Um, I've got my slow and sear in here today which I really like. I've only used it four or five times but I have no complaints with it. It works really well. So we're just going to get these ribs put on here. This is going to run between 250 and 275 today. And uh, these will go for probably two, uh, even bigger chunks like this, it might take a little longer. Usually about two hours. But I'm guessing we'll probably be closer to three or four before we wrap these. But I'll keep you posted and let you know. I might be surprised. It might be the same. So anyway, I'm going to get this closed up. We'll lose all of our heat. Just going to let those roll. I've got them on there with some hickory wood today and uh, I'll actually bring you in closer here real quick and take this lid off and show you how I have this set up with my slow ones here so that you can see what my setup is on it. Way down here I put a little black mark so I know if it's there it's going to run about 250 275. I'll leave the top vent wide open with that. Um, smoke here you can see so this is the slow and sear here. I don't know how well you can see it because of the smoke going on in there. And I've just got two small pieces of wood on top of there. So I light 10 charcoal briquettes and put on this end, and then I fill the rest with unlit charcoal. There's water in the, in the water reservoir here, and just a brick pan there. So that's how I've got that set up on the kettle. Like I say, if I leave the lid on here tight, leave that vent where it is, I just know from cooking on it five or six times, and that's going to put me at 250 to 275. So we'll be back in a couple hours and uh, check on these ribs. All right, guys, we're going to check on these ribs. It's been about uh, two and a half hours. It's 155, 155, 64. 148. Okay, so right around 155, 160, or when you like the way the bark looks, which I like on this one. It looks good. We're going to get these off and we're going to put them in a foil pan. What I'm going to do, I'm hoping they'll all fit in this pan. I'm going to put, make sure you didn't see me. I'm going to put about a half a cup of water in there. I'm going to lay these onions in here like so. I just have some onions and garlic here. And we're just going to take that and kind of mix it around in there. That's just the minced garlic because I'm lazy. And that's how I do it. You could do a couple cloves of garlic and squish in there, but I just put a couple spoonfuls of the already minced garlic and it's good to go. So then, uh, let's see if we can fit all these in here. Oh yeah, no problem. Room to spare. Just like that. Move them back over here so they're indirect. Them. Nice and tight. <coughs> nope. Good 
just like that, nice and tight with the tin foil. Try not to burn my fingers there. And we're just going to let those braise in there. That's going to break down that fat the rest of the way and just make those as tender as can be. So we're going to let that ride. Like I said, we've been on there for about three hours. We're going to let this ride for about another, um, probably two, two and a half hours just until they get tender. And uh, then we'll be back and I'll show you what we come up with with the finished product. All right, so it's time to check our ribs. They've been on here for about three hours. Oh yeah, look at those. Man, it's tasty. Two hundred. Two hundred. Two o two. Two o three. Those are just probing like butter. We're gonna get these off here, get them out of this pan, and give them a taste. All right, guys, we let these beef ribs rest for about 45 minutes, which is about all I can stand. I'm gonna bring these up here, let you have a look at them. I mean, look at that. I can't wait to get a taste of these. So, you can see these things are just pulling apart. I'm gonna bring you in closer so you can see me cut these up. All right. All right. I'm gonna have to stand this way so you can see me cut it, but I wanna see what these look like inside. Oh yeah. Ooh, ring warm still. Look at that. Give me a taste of that. All right, guys. No, oh, so beefy. Wow. Man, if you haven't had any beef short ribs, you got to get some of that. Oh, man, that is good. Look at these end pieces. These pieces off the end and all that bark on them. Mm. Dang. So these took total, guys, about five, five and a half hours to cook. Usually you buy them, they're in smaller pieces in the store and they cook a little quicker. But I don't mind. These taste really good. They're moist. They're tender. And man, I don't know how you'd get a piece of beef that tastes much better than that. So if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up and a like, and uh, we'll see you next time.